Uh, my name is Robert Cardell. I have uh, spent 25 years in the Swedish military. I'm a lieutenant colonel there. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a pilot. I've flown a little bit of fighters, but mostly helicopters, and that's what I've been doing for the last, well, it's a little more than 20 years. I've flown everything from hunting submarines in the Swedish archipelago to rescue operations, the Estonia disaster, and, and then in later years, the other conflicts that we have dealt with in the world. I've been to Somalia, I've been to Afghanistan uh, in, in different capacities. I, I started lecturing in, in 2010, very late in 2010, so this I guess is my seventh year. In 2014 I was awarded uh, Speaker of the Year Breakthrough and then just a few weeks ago I, I, I was named Speaker of the Year Man in Sweden. So that was a huge honor and I'm very proud of that. When I lecture I talk about my experiences from my military world and often it's situations that very few others have been in but I do take these experiences and I make them generally applicable because I think that, that all of these situations what they have in common is that it regards human beings and it is as human beings, as individuals, as organizations that we react to this situation. It's, and it's my absolute experience and belief that it doesn't matter whether it's huge amounts of money that is at stake or that we have very short time frames to adhere to or that people feel that their honor is at stake or they even have to risk their lives. Our reactions to these situations are the same because we're human beings. And that makes what I have experienced and my transformation to a generally applicable way very workful, very useful. I, I, I think that the, the, the power of what, I, of what I'm doing is that I come in from the side, I come from a world that's very different from everybody else. I'm a new voice. It's not what people have heard their own managers say over and over or, or part of what's internally going on. But I come with a clear vision, with, a, with a something fresh from the side, from a context, from a world that very few have experienced and then I transform that into the situation that we are in here and that will make people listen to me the more because they don't exclude what I'm saying and I don't, I don't paint a message on their forehead. They draw their own solutions from what I from what I said, what I tell this, this I've been in this situation, I think, and I, I should be apply, I should apply that this way. Uh, oh, I, I often do that mistake myself. I should be thinking this way other, instead. So it's, it's, it's the power of, of making people realize themselves how they should change behavior or what tools they could bring to their toolbox in whatever situation they're in. Uh, I think it's essential that we realize that we're always that we need to have a story that we have a context no matter what the situation is. So often in whatever we do we're focused on what or how, very technical issues, but that's that's not what's instrumental in getting an organization to be coherent, to work together for a common goal. The, the essential thing is to have a story, to have a context, to understand why you're doing something. That's what brings people together. And it isn't until you have a common story, common context, that you can have, create common goals. You need that first, not the other way around. And everybody's after common goals, but you need to have a common story, a common context first to achieve that. Often when you find yourself in a new complex situation, there are all kinds of issues brought up. There's a bus of things that everybody drowns in. And, and the, the, the problem, of course, is what should we actually be dealing with? What, what should we start with? And, and, my, and my absolute belief is that we have to ask ourselves, okay, what is absolutely necessary in order to get where we need to, to be going? And the absolute necessities aren't a whole lot of things. It's two or three. And once we've found those, we start working with what's absolutely necessary. And then the next step is to work with what we think is possible, with whom we are, the resources we have, the time that's available. And then the last step, step is to deal with what we feel is impossible. Because quite often when we, don't, when we don't organize ourselves, we often start with lists of impossibilities and we dig our own grave because we can't solve them, we lose our self-confidence and everything just spirals down. Do it the other way around. Identify what's absolutely necessary and start work with that. And then everything will follow after that.